so that's that's where it all began, right here in Sisters. You can see our greenhouses down through here. Which you won't do this year. Uh, not, right? we'll, we'll start early next year. I'm super excited about that. And then behind it, you'll see our teepees, and that's the Sykes, another crazy Sykes invention right there. <laughs> but, you know, I'm a... I'm a believer in necessity. I, I may not be able to afford fancy, but if it works, at least in my mind, I'm going to try it. And then if it really works, I look like this crazy goofball because it's something that <laughs> nobody's seen that before. But we we have a very special climate in the high desert. Right. And so it's dry, and we have an afternoon breeze every day that you can almost count your watch to. And so... You, Mother Nature will help you dry. And then the rest with the idea, you know, I drive through farms or different agricultural products and I look at it and I was going through Tri-Cities and they had these huge poles and pulley systems over these crops. And I was looking at a very high tech hop farm and I was wrapping my head around that as I was going through and that's how this TP idea came up. Hey there, Bailey Sweet with Harvest Helper Trim Store. I'm in the beautiful Bend, Oregon. I'm at Big Top Farms, and I'm taking a tour on some new methods that are really interesting. I thought you guys would like to see this. This is Sykes Mitchell's teepee, and you can see how windy it is, and these are just flowing like sheets on a clock line. But not going crazy. There's, look at these little almost nothing so it's just literally protecting itself it's like nature's drying right here the bud has nice nice texture and track it's not over okay, so Sykes already has all of his plants out of the ground but we're gonna go from that point from the point of the plants coming out of the ground through his whole process through his automated drying his separating his uh, bucking, trimming, packaging, sorting, um, inventory, all the things he has to go through to make this come together and happen and grow year after year. There, right. So we cut the tops. Okay. We cut the tops and then we hang the tops. These are the tops. Okay. And then we move and we label everything so we know what part of the field it came from, the day it came down. We cut, this is the fun part, this is an Oregon CBD field right here. We cut this field four times before we harvested it. Wow. We took 4,000 pounds an acre off of this field after we cut it four times. Wow. Really, really, really happy about how this field worked. And this is, this is why you just, why would you try anybody else's genetics? Right. Yeah, I did. But you, I mean, they're just that good. That's, I got a lady in Utah right now that I've been selling equipment to and she used Oregon CBD and she is doing so much better than her peers that did not. Oh, I'm sure. I, I, and I don't know what their growing climate is, but it's just such a consistent product. Yeah. And that, so that's the other thing too, is that you're, you're really in an area that, I mean, I guess we're in areas that are so moist. Like you're just in the ideal climate for this. It really is. So it's, a, it's, it's a great climate for it. Do you think that it'll become a um, place for hemp? That you uh, know. I think that's probably the best question you've asked me so far. I think I think Central Oregon is going to be the Sonoma of hemp. When the when the word finally gets out and everybody sees what you go through to get the best right. product. Your consistency is going to come from Central Oregon. You're yeah. not going to have the seeding issues, the mold issues. And, and you know if you have a, 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 a gene or a, a strain that can finish early, which is what we're talking about with Oregon CBD right. and the genetics, you, you can plant it and you can count on it finishing out and getting it out of the field before the weather changes. And that's yeah, everything. So it's just that, like so. you're reducing that gamble. Mm -hmm. So this is the light depths, and then we've just converted light depths into storage. This one here is, uh, this is the original one that we had on the other side of the field. And the neighbor said, you know, 
I hope you guys have all the success in the world, but you put the greenhouse right in the view of the only mountain view I've got. I said, well, if we have a good year, we'll move it. <laughs> <laughs> so he took it from that end of the field on uh, wheels and rolled it here. Oh, you're such a good neighbor. <laughs> it great. So there's Rhonda working on some of the drying racks, one of our girls. So how long does this hang for? Uh, you know, we try and cure it for, you know, between 9 and 14 days in, in, with the dehumidifiers. And in, in, in this situation, that's about what we get out of it, take it down. I am just carefully brushing dried wet trim from the rack into the tote. So we, we wet trim these and then rack them. Uh -huh. And it makes it a really, it's a different product than some of the other ones off the stem, but it's it's ready really quick. So yeah. during a harvest season when somebody goes, oh, come on, you gotta have something ready. Yep. We run them through the T4s yep. and, and then uh, and the T2 that we got from you. And then we put them on the rack and we can dry them. And the rack is, is fun and we give it a pop so we don't have flat spots. So we have a rack pop right, you know, I try and come through here and give them a smack and flip them. Oh, yeah. Just like that and they, they bounce in there. Cool. Um, a lot of these, once they're filled up, and this is the finished product, of course. Isn't that pretty? That is pretty. Oh, look at that. This was wet trim? Yep. You didn't even lose the nose. No. No. That's... It, 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 we we did it out of necessity to, for markets, and mm -hmm. and people were like, "You're gonna ruin it." It's like, no, I don't think I'd do it if it was gonna ruin it. Yeah, wow. At least not twice in a row. Yeah. But these are, and you can find that peach smell in there. Although the wind is a little blowy today, um, the hairs are all intact. Yeah. Let's get a close up. Of it. We should like smell it blue tinted ones those, those were had a little bit of look at the crystals on that mm -hmm. and that's the goliath too yep yep so same strain just has some that come out with yep that variants too. what causes that do you know well it's just a you know different phenotypes in the in the strain yeah um and that's and they have a strawberry and a grape smell and then they have the peach smell and, and they're all in the same bag of seeds. Yeah, it's because they're getting it from the seeds, eh? Right, right. right. So, is this your purple? Yeah. Oh, there they are. Yeah. Look, look, yeah, look at that one. Oh, and that purple. That. Look how purple. So this would be another phenotype of the Goliath? Yeah, and we had a guy that just, he wanted 60 pounds of just the purple, so Pam went out and just picked hand-picked purple before the frost cave so is that part of why you like doing it by from the seeds too is you get the different varieties oh the yeah and, and you know and the other thing is with the high desert we get a we get the diurnal temperature change so you know at night we're going to drop into that freezing range we're going to be between 28 and 32 degrees and then it goes it can go back up to 90 degrees and that is what makes them make the oil and it's why we get that purple right. without mold yeah. a, lot, a lot of places in the country that grow a purple flower People are really leery because they figure it's been in the field so long that it turned purple from yeah. maturity and it probably has mold from rain. Well, we're in the desert. That purple is caused from that diurnal right. change. So and it's just. And there's a purple. Look at that one. Look at that one. With that is with the cover girl. Purple variety. I just think they're sexy. They look like jewels. <laughs> it's got true. The, I, I noticed the colors oh, out and about, and this is about from that. the Sea Hawk. That, that, how bad I hate dust. So, yeah, it was a great combination. <laughs> this is from the, uh, it's from the Seahawks turf. They, he went and picked it all up, and they were switching <laughs> it out to reduce the dust out. So, maybe here we are again. How much did that cost you to order Seahawk turf? Well, we just, <laughs> when they replaced it, we got it from a replacement company. Um, they, and it basically, we just paid the shipping to get it to us. And they just shipped it to you just for cost? Yeah, because they, they 
they don't want them in the landfill. They're really hard in the landfill. Yeah. So they try and find people that want it. And I thought it'd be great to just lay it down where high traffic areas, no dust. So pro football games have been played on this grass right here? That's the rumor. So this is where it all started. So in the winter we had a uh, the little heater over here and the yeah. girls on the trim rack. And you know, we've been doing flower as long as anybody that I know of. I mean, four years now yeah. we've been in the flower business, but the biomass, you know, it's in the tank right now, but it, it's always been our secondary product. Yeah. This is what we're, we want to do flower. We want to be known yeah. as, hey, it's gonna be a flower. Yeah. And the biomass, do you think it's, it was just bad because there was such a flood last year? So flooded out. And now the just... people that are not in it anymore, that are sitting in barns full of bags are willing to let it go at, for nothing. So next year, the year after. Well, they're, they're, yeah, they're, they're thinking by March, we should see a change in pricing, which would be nice, but it's, you can't count on anything, but knowing half the market went that's in business this year went CBG, yeah. and half of it's in CBD, that, that's just going to eventually, you know, supply and demand. We're going to go through that supply, and then the demand will go back up. But yeah. you know, is next year the pl the year to go big, or is the next year to hold back? Those are all the the cards we got to you know guess on later. But. Yeah. You see that? Uh huh. Wow. And this, there's no flour after this. It gets compressed into a 1,500 pound bale. Right, okay, uh, Jeffrey, how'd you get mixed up with Sykes? And what do you do here? Um, title? Well, I'm the VP of operations for a few different companies. Okay. Uh, the first of which is Imperial Seedlings. We're a genetic, genetics advisement company and a seedling provider to the hemp industry. Okay. So we provide genetic advisement and then the subsequent seedlings, crop advisement, and then Post Harvest Biology's advisement as a as that company. And is that specific to Oregon or nationwide? That's nationwide. Okay. Yes, we're one of the few companies that ships hemp seedlings nationwide, uh, and we're going international with cuts here shortly. So excited about the prospects. Okay. All right, that's one. The next. Two. Uh, two would be a distributorship. Okay. Uh, it's called Elevated Distributing. Elevated Distributing. Okay. Elevated works with the farms uh, in their post harvest processings with a JV partner from Assure Technologies. Okay. Um, as a duo, we provide the post harvest advisement, uh, processing, desiccation, trimming, bagging, and yep. then through Elevated, the sale of okay. said product, uh, either into processed goods uh, for CGP or for small cool flour. Okay. All right. Can you tell us your process here in the harvesting aspect? So for the for the harvesting aspect, that's really one of the better parts of the new technology that we're bringing to bear in the market. And that is a drying process that doesn't exceed 72 degrees and will dry product in 48 hours. So we've launched our beta test this year with great success here on Big Top Farms okay. and are hoping to launch uh, duplicity into the market next year, providing hubs for farmers to bring their material to where it can be processed in a timely fashion right. at scale and still have the idea of valued constituent preservation in mind. Okay. So since you've been operating this system here with the amount of product that was brought in, do you s was there time in the harvest season to bring on product here for other people or would there be next year? This year there wasn't. Right. No, we only brought four units. Um, okay. The output of those units on average is about 500 to 700 pounds of dried material per day. Okay. And so next year the idea with duplicity is to bring multiples of those to a hub here in central Oregon, southwest Oregon, uh, north of Bakersfield, okay. a few other parts of the country so that we can provide hubs for right. farmers to bring their product in to be processed, much like that of other commoditized crops. Okay. So what we're going to see is essentially a pilot project with four dryers, correct? Correct. Are we going to follow him? Yeah. Sure. Which way? Where do we start? Do we want to walk through the process? Yep, we yeah. do. We Let's, want to walk through the process. Let's start here just as an example. So we cut to size in the field. So that we're, if we're having scissor work, that scissor work occurs uh, in the field. We're taking the best of the best, smokable flour, and then coming through later with bean pickers or other harvesting technologies to make up for the remainder of the plant. Okay. So, as an example, this is some product that's come out recently that has been dried uh, in about 48 hours. And you'll notice it's got a nice crispness to it. Uh, we get the moisture content down to where it's shelf stable and maintains its durability. Uh -huh. But the temperatures that we're drying at are really 
focused around the preservation of monotrypenes yeah. and cannabinoids. Yeah. So we get a, a great nose, um, dried down in 48 hours versus the you know seven to 10 days, or if it's raining, even longer. Right. Uh, so this is a very consistent process that used uh, our new technology. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. It's kind of unbelievable to me, honestly. Machine dried with a nose. Yeah, so it's, it's very gentle on the product. That's yeah. the idea, right? Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. Um, we show you some of the uh, units from okay. the outside if you cool. want. Yeah, absolutely. So these are the two companies that. Uh, we're in partnership with, which is Assure Technology and Agrimation. Okay. Um, these four units are the prototype units that we'll be uh, bringing duplicity to the market with next year. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, pretty straightforward. Except for the fact that I can't show you what's inside. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. yeah. Right. So, like I said, the, there, are, there are four it's units. It's a problem that a lot of people are trying to solve, so. Sure, <laughs> well, We're hoping that we've got the best mousetrap in the business. Yeah. Um, you know, if this if this season uh, starting here with Sykes was any indication, I think we do. Yeah. Uh, we're headed to Northern California next to move these units to the next farm. Uh -huh. um, they're they're modular this year for that beta testing, and then next year we'll run the hooks. Okay. The next step, well. So after it comes out of the dryer. Right. That's what we just looked at. It's in the racks here. Or? Right. And normally it would come in out of the field, right? We would sack it and rack it, put it in the machine, pull it out 48 hours later. At which point it goes into trim. Okay. Yeah. So what happens here? If we'll stay out of her way. Is we'll take the finished product into trim, which is where companies like yours come into play. We need more scale technologies for product that's been dried down and is, is ready for that process. So, uh -huh. yeah. From basically from these trays into, into the trimmers. Okay. So, pretty straightforward. Very streamlined, not a lot of moving parts per se. Um, and yeah, that's a long short. Yeah, I like it. What we're trying to do is, is avoid, you know, maybe some of the, what's the best way to say this? The previous attempts from farms to try and reinvent the wheel. Yeah. Uh, and, and stick to really standardized protocol. Yeah. So we can get a standardized process in it. Yep. reliable product on the yeah, back end absolutely. so that's much uh, uh, what, we're, what we're geared towards cool i like it yeah i like it consistency look at you look at you oh, right, ready to get to work <laughs> i know you better than that <laughs> he took me inside and showed me everything everything uh, so you want to run some we want to run some. So, from the from the racks that come out of the dryer, you're going straight into a trimmer. You're not bucking it down further, right? So, so it's going straight from tote to. We've got some short stacks right now coming out. They're all cut size. So let's show her that because that would be good. Right. And I'll, uh, I'll have some people bring some from Spain. Genetic from Spain. Yeah. How much are you putting in there? We're gonna put a full 27 gallon tote in and let it run because of after we've ran a few batches through this we like the the dryness is just right so we run it actually sub five minute run and then check it and, it, and it's pretty clean so this has got a pretty fuzzy look to it still got a nice squish in the middle firm but the outside's crumbly oh, here, Bailey will correct me if i'm doing anything out of line so there's a five minute setting and start your engines. Start your engine. Okay, Scott, we're gonna take a peek at its progress. That one right. Yeah. And that's a minute and a half. 
and it's pretty cool when you can reach in. This was, I remember looking at these big ones going in. Now that's bigger and you're gonna have some difficulty with a bigger one just as it tumbles, but to have those be a good portion of what you've done in a minute and a half, that makes it all worthwhile to me. And then this will all go on a conveyor for the, the snip. We'll look for any of those crow's feet yeah. and the final, it'll just drop Finish in the bucket. And you know, our customers, of course, they want this broke down, but for us to go and be able to break this down and clean it up that fast, is really that's why you're here it's what we want to see in a machine that does it really really good Good. So, how long did we trim that 27-gallon tub for? Uh, maybe two minutes. Two minutes in the back to that <coughs> <Mr>. Trimmer. <coughs> Not COVID. <coughs> Very. Yeah, that's Keith. Keith it. Not COVID. Keith it. This is the Goliath. This is yep. the same one. This is the exact same one. This is the fuzzy going in, and you just saw the results wow. coming out. Actually, you should walk that over to the tote that's down there. Um, I wish I had my gloves on. I don't want yeah, to. no, it's cool. Let's, I don't want let's to get do the comment feedback for yeah. you. Yeah. Nerd boys out there waiting yeah, for I you. Yeah, Perfect. So, oh, yeah. before and after two minutes, and there's a few of these that are good side-by-side -side comparisons they went in like that wow. come in two minutes <laughs> having shrink if we have a moisture issue if we're too dry or too wet um, that's that's one of our ways of knowing our weights where we're at um, and then it's, of course I wish I would have invested in freaking bought stock know, and right? totes <laughs> it's, it's crazy but there's just a lot of it so this one's yeah. a different batch number upper Ennis still in the Goliath cultivar but also lime green so there's two lime greens um, lower in us, upper in us, as we swept through the field, taking those out. And some of that, you know, we have markets in that we found this last year, everybody was looking for the lime green, whether they're doing a Delta H spray, mm -hmm. or they're just in a part of the country that does not understand purple. Right. And we've got other people that want purple, so we just separated them. So it's easier for them. They can Easier for the buyer. Yeah. 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 And cool. some people want to put all purple in a jar, that's yeah. fine. It goes, it goes, it goes. And it goes and goes. Yeah. And this is just being dried and ready for buying. Yeah, we just we, we brought some of the flowers in and we're just slow curing them in here. Mm -hmm. They're getting closer. But they're I think they've got another by the feel of it, I'll tell you they got another probably four days. 
to get there. And then those are those are marked as well so that we can come up here and when we tote them we know what we've got. Okay. And it's just trying to the stay organized. Wall. Yeah. Yes. So it just it doesn't do any good to have them all in a pile. Yeah, I think yeah. you got we got some really good stuff here. People the buyers nowadays want to know exactly what they're getting and right. they want to know how, how many pounds behind it. Exactly. <laughs> So it, you know, again, and we we did 30 acres of the of the Goliath, uh -huh. and about 35 acres of the Oregon CBD. And the Goliath, because it's compliant, and and we have the COAs, it's going to be pretty popular. For yeah. Us. So we're we're happy to have the batches, and and you know the stores and the buyers that are going, they want to know, okay, you've got 550 pounds of the green Goliath from Upper yep. Rudy with a COA. We want it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's what we're trying to do as the farm is just be more organized. So yeah. the buyer wants to come back. It's not a it's not a bad experience. Right. Yeah. I wanted 50 pounds of perps, so we got a perps. So is this bag ready for most of your buyers, or do you have to tighten it up a bit, or is that? Well, better? no. This this guy wanted a machine, so this is ready as far as yep. a machine it's perfect but now hand trim you got to clean it up a lot we're pretty we have a pretty tight trim on that but that's not what this is this is yeah. this is a machine trim so they're they're okay with that and they they like the color and if they want to trim it down you know we're, we're priced accordingly so yeah it, you know machine trim is not going to be anything like the hand trim but yeah cool yeah Beautiful. that one's green Let's check um, the screen one out. Same exact stream, just a different. Oh yeah, look at the difference. Yeah. That's the only thing I see in the bags of like when I looked on .com, I wasn't seeing like shredded like flour. Yeah. So our some Probably of our some of our flour. best clients that buy from us regularly have sites on YouTube, whatever social media outlet that they have, and they take it out of the bag. This is from Big Top Farms, and they strip it off even the, the, yeah. the last of the tip of the stem right yeah and grind it in front of you and they tell you what store they're going to tomorrow and the wow. next day and he goes i can't keep it in the house it, awesome. but he's telling them where he's going and who's going to get the goodies next and we just get it to him that's our job just get it to yeah. him and that guy is all about the quality it's not yeah. about the price we walked into texas stores and you know the guy behind the counter is like i don't know where it came from midwest yeah. Well, let's see it and opens up a like an oatmeal can, pours it on the counter and there's stems and seeds and crap and it's like, wow, people like that? He goes, they like the price. It's $9.99. I'm like, it's horrible. Yeah. It's, I don't even see a flower in there. But um, people will figure it out and it's just, it's no different than what we were talking about earlier with the stores. Um, that's where people try it and they're like, well, we did the CBD and it didn't work. Well, try ours and and we get we get some comebacks to it but you you just know there's a lot of people i'm not trying it again at 40 bucks to, to have failure why would i do that and and i'm sitting in line to buy something and i'm looking at these little racks with cbd blah 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 yeah. and there's nothing in it and it's like right. you're just capturing the yeah. sexy part of the cbd sales right now and you're ruining it for these because people aren't getting the results exactly and, and you know small boutique farmers that are trying to you know march forward with this new medicine are getting you know snuffed by the big guys that all they're doing is chasing the dollar yeah one of the things that we've done with our products is we've given a lot of our product away and to family friends people that have problems cancer we've been giving away free since we started to anybody that has cancer we just give it to you right you don't want to try it don't but right. if you're interested and you're in pain or you're going through this we just get it to you and it's amazing how many people and how many people's family are like you guys are just doing incredible stuff yeah well wow. we've, we've really wanted to know that it actually works for people on all, you of, our real products, all of our products yep. so it's not just coming from a lab um, we've got recipes that have been developed in-house, some of them are old family recipes from some of our team um, for like the soap and the lotions, but, um, but we want to know that it's actually going to work before we've ever put our name on it and put it on the shelf. So it's taken us a while to actually get our consumer products.
product line up, but that was why, is we, right. we truly wanted to make sure... There were products that were going to be effective. Exactly. Yeah. 